Hey, what is up, everybody? Welcome to another Coding Minds uh, web conference. The hosts for tonight are Angel, Nina, and I. Today's presenter is Amanda Zhu. Amanda is a junior at Port Portola High School. Procrastination is a lot of students' biggest problem right now. Once procrastination becomes a habit, it's very hard to change even when students go on to attend college and jobs. Uh, Amanda's project is an app that helps students get rid of uh, bad habits by using computer vision algorithm and optical character recognition. So without further ado, Amanda, whenever you're ready, you may share your screen. Okay, hi everyone. I'm gonna um, start my presentation. My name is Amanda Zhu. So a little bit about me. I'm currently a junior at Portola High School. Um, some things I enjoy doing in my free time besides coding are playing piano, taking pictures, and hanging out with my friends. Uh, Amanda, sorry, yeah. could you turn on your camera? Oh, okay. okay. Thank you. Um, okay, so... Um, for this project, I decided to focus on one particular issue in society, which is procrastination. Um, procrastination have, can have a very negative effect on students' schoolwork and even their health. According to a survey conducted by Study Mode, which is an education company, 87% of students say they procrastinate, and more than half of high school students say they procrastinate because they get distracted. Students who procrastinate tend to experience higher levels of frustration, guilt, stress, and anxiety, which can all lead to serious issues like low self-esteem and depression. Once students start receiving more assignments and larger projects, students who procrastinate until the last minute tend to receive lower grades than their peers. This can create a cycle of bad grades and low self-confidence that can be difficult for students to overcome. In addition, due to the recent COVID-19 pandemic, students throughout the country have been getting educated online through emergency distance learning. While technology can be beneficial and has even become part of our daily lives, it can also be very distracting. It requires students discipline to stay on track and pay attention to their homework and lessons. So, oh, and here's a picture that shows that watching TV and using social media are the top two most popular techniques of procrastination. And my program focuses on things like this, which are like forms of technology. And this picture shows that COVID-19 has forced more than 1 billion, almost 1.5 billion students to stay home, which shows how many people are affected. Um, I was inspired to create a program that basically monitors and tracks the different media being used outside the premises of school or work. By implementing Google Cloud Vision API, the program is able to identify distracting websites and how much time the user spends on them. The program takes a screenshot of the user's computer screen every 10 seconds, and the image is uploaded to cloud storage with libraries of text. After this, a cloud function is triggered, which uses Vision API to extract the text. The program utilizes an internal counter that increases by one each time a distracting form of media is detected in the screenshot. So for example, Twitter or Facebook or YouTube. And once the counter reaches 10, the program prompts the device to send a notification that reminds the user to stay on task. After this, um, the program continues to take screenshots and add to the counter. And if the user basically decides to ignore the notification, then once the counter reaches 15, the tab with the distraction is automatically closed. And this is a visual diagram that shows what I just said. I'm going to show a quick demo of my project. So, I'm going to 
exit my presentation real quick. So if I'm waiting for this to start. Okay, so let's just assume you're like writing an essay or something. And then you go to uh, distracting with it, what's on my list, um, addictinggames.com. This is a game website, which is obviously very distracting. And my program, it would be able to like take a screenshot of the screen and it will be able to detect that this um, URL could be a one of a potentially distracting website. So any second now I should be sending a notification to me. Okay, so I was told yesterday that like the Zoom participants are unable to see like the notification on my screen. So here it is on my notification, like, I don't know what you call it, notification center. And then after this, if I stay on this website for more time without switching it back to like Google Docs, then it should close. Like that. Okay, so now let me just stop this real quick and get back to my presentation. Okay, um, some, oh, sorry. Some challenges I faced were, um, well, the first challenge I faced was detecting text from the screenshot with accuracy. So currently um, this application uses optical character recognition, which provides around 98 to 99% accuracy. And in most cases, this is a pretty acceptable accuracy level, but since optical character recognition is used on um, screenshots of the user's computer screen, lower quality images may affect the accuracy of the program. And the screenshot depends on display resolution. So the higher the display resolution, the better the screenshot. And in addition, there may also be instances where the website gets blocked by another window tab or the mouse pointer and the program is not able to accurately identify the website um, if the website is distracting. So for example, if I were to go on twitter.com and then I like managed to block the URL with like another window, so it only said www.twi and then the second half was cut off, um, the program would not be able to identify that it was Twitter.com. So in order to solve this problem, I implemented this thing called fuzzy string matching. And it's basically a type of search that will find matches even when users misspell words or enter only partial words for the search. Another challenge was um, conducting a larger user study. So um, another is uh, dif it's difficult to share the Python program with other people since not everyone has Python installed on their computer. So, and also um, some of my code is operating system specific. It's specific to Mac OS because I personally use a MacBook. So it might not work on like other people's computers. And the third challenge I faced was um, finding the most effective method of closing the browser because there are multiple ways of closing the browser, including, including force closing the window or just the tab or even redirecting the user to another application such as like a to-do list or a calendar. And after some experimentation, I concluded that closing only the tab was the most effective method of closing the browser. In addition to the Python program, I also use Swift to create a supplementary iOS app. 
This app allows the user to add and delete from the list of websites being monitored and blocked. So as you can see in this middle picture, you can use delete buttons and also an add button right here. Um, the app comes with a preset list of websites, but the user can customize the list according to their preferences. So basically how I made this app was I imported Firebase to Swift so that when the user adds or removes a website, the new data would be sent directly to the database. After this, the list automatically refreshes so that it always has the most current information. They can also, the user can also uh, start and stop the program as seen in this third picture right here, just by clicking a button. When the user clicks start, um, Firebase is triggered to start the program on the user's computer. And then after this, the button changes to stop so that the user can stop the program as well. Okay, so that concludes my presentation. I have this survey. I would appreciate if everyone could take it. It'll, um, the data will be used in my research. And I'll put the link in the chat. Okay, it seems like most, uh, a lot of people are done. So let's move on to Q&A. So if you have any questions, as usual, uh, it'd be better if you said them out loud, but you could also put it in the chat. So how long did you create this? Um, I, we, I initially started this project for this um, competition called Technovation last year. So it's been a little more than a year since I created this project. Very nice. Thank you. Do you have any future improvements that you plan to implement? Um, I plan on, I plan on like improving the mobile app a little bit more. And that's like my only future plan right now, but I'm also writing a paper for this application and I'm gonna publish that sometime in the future. Have you considered to make it so that um, the user loses his or her ability to quit the app once it is running? Because like you can simply regain access to the like websites that make you procrastinate, like simply by quitting the app. Um, I I don't think I have done anything as of right now to address that problem, but that's definitely something I want to look into in the future. Did you work on this by yourself or did you have like anyone else help you? I worked on this by myself. Also, um, the part where you identify like if a website is distracting or not, do you use the URL to determine that or like what the web page looks like? Um, I personally cho chose to use the URL because there are some cases where you might be just like using Google or something and then the word Twitter might pop up and that if I just use like keywords like that, then it'll throw off the program. So mm -hmm. if it has .com after it, then it um, decreases the chances of that happening. I see. So did you have to like make a database for all of the distracting websites? Yeah, I had like a list of everything. Do you plan on adding more websites to your list? Um, well, I'll look at the survey result and I'll see, like, because there was a question that said, what type of websites do you usually get distracted by? So I'll like change my list according to 
the data that I get. Okay. Uh, Jimmy asks, do you plan on doing this for apps? Um, I have thought about that because my program does use uh, optical character recognition. So like it'll be able to screenshot the app and stuff. So that is something I would like to look into more into in the future. Yeah, I'd imagine that it'd probably be a bit different because there's no URL for apps. Um, so there's more questions in the chat. Uh, could you show the code again with the distracting website? The code? Okay, this is, this is basically that? all my code. Um, is there anything specific you wanted to see? I can kind of go through it. So, um, basically, I used this. So the um, I imported this Python library called PyAutoGui, and that's what I used to take the screenshots. And then once it takes a screenshot, it saves the image file as under this name. And then like each screenshot it replaces the previous one so it doesn't take up a lot of space on your computer and then um, i the optical character recognition is applied here where it says like detect text Uh, so SQ, does that answer your question or which part did you want to specifically see? Uh, the list where you can add or delete the website. Okay, so currently you can only do that in the app and my app is like it's still a work in progress so sorry i can't really show that right now okay uh so jimmy asks does this support other browsers yes so like i used i demonstrated it on chrome and it also worked on like safari and firefox and everything else Do you think your program affects the privacy of the users? Um, that's actually a question I get a lot, but in my opinion, like you're going to get this program if you want to like help yourself. So, so in my opinion, like you shouldn't really be worried about your privacy and it's not like I'm going to use your data for anything. So it's for your own benefit. Have you tried this program like on yourself? I have tried this program on myself and well, a lot, like last year for my science fair project and my data came out to be, it reduced my use of distracting websites by like 40%, around 40%. Uh, have you found any websites that your program doesn't work on? Um, I don't believe so. Not at the moment, no. Uh, is it possible to have 
the audience suggest some distracting websites and then we could test it out and see. Oh, yeah, sure. Okay, so um, you guys can put in like some of your online game websites or uh, any website that maybe distracts you and we can test it out. Okay, we have YouTube and what is this? CurseForge.com, Roblox, Crazy Games. Yeah, you can pick from any of those. Let's see, um, I'll do Crazy Games. Okay, so as you can see, I just got a notification that says please stay on task. So that shows that it did identify this as a potentially distracting website. And then if we wait a few more seconds, it should close out of this tab. So in order for your program to work, you have to turn off do not disturb. I have to turn, yeah, because um, it gives you like a notification. So if you turn it on, then the notification wouldn't come through. And that kind of defeats the whole purpose of having a notification. Would the tab still automatically close out if you had do not disturb? Yes. Yeah, so it closed just now. Um, let's look at another website. Cool map game. Okay. Oops. Someone asked how long does it take to close the browser? Um, it depends. So basically when the program when the program um, finds a distracting website, then the counter, it like goes up. But if you're not on a distracting website, then it goes down. So it depends like how you're like managing between your tabs. So I don't, I'm not sure if Cool Math Games is actually on my list. I can check right now because it's taking kind of a long time to close so well map games is not on my list right now so it's not gonna close and basically um what was i gonna say so like i said before um my program it runs off like a list so so even though a um even if a dis a, a website might be distracting it might not be on the list or the preset li list so you can always add it like by yourself in the app cool and um Is there anything else that um, the audience wants to ask? Okay, Winona says, uh, how do we download the app on iOS or Android? Um, so right now, it this program, it's not in the App Store or Google Play, but that's something I want to publish in the future, hopefully. Okay. 
Uh, so Amanda, do you have anything else? Anything you want to say? Um, no, not really. Thank you, everyone, for listening. Okay, cool. So uh, that's it then. And Angel. Well, yeah. So um, before you guys go, please follow us on Twitter at Coding Minds Academy and Facebook at Coding Underscore Minds. Um, that's it for tonight's Going Minds project presentation. Good job, Amanda, on this project. Tune in next week for another Coding Mind conference, and we'll see you then. We want to thank you on behalf of Coding Minds and have a great evening.